Okay, Assalamualaikum and good afternoon everyone. So let's begin our class with Umar Kitab Al-Fatihah. Okay, um, so uh, can you see my slide? Yes, means. Okay. Okay, so um, basically today uh, you will learn on the kinetic molecular theory. Okay, but before that, I think uh, we should recap a little bit uh, what you have learned in previous uh, subtopics, okay, for chapter four. Okay, so Okay, so for the ideal gas, okay, you have learned in the Boyce's Law, Charles' Law and Avogadro's Law, okay. When you combine all together, you will get the ideal gas equation which is PV equals to NRT. Okay, so where P must be in uh, ATM, volume in liter and mole, so T will be in Kelvin. With the gas constant R here, normally we will use the 0 0.08 to 1. Okay, so we have another one, uh, R. Okay, so basically that one, if you want to use uh, uh, 8.314, uh, this value, you must change all the pressure uh, and volume accordingly. Okay, but I think better you refer to this lah, 0 0.08 to 1. Eh? Okay, so from this uh, PV and RT, actually you can also... Um, Play around with the equation to calculate the molar mass. Okay. You can calculate the molar mass. Okay. By having this formula, molar mass equals to MRT over PV. Okay. So you play around with the uh, mole here and also you can get or calculate the density. Okay. So where we can relate the um, mass and also the volume to get the density. Okay, so, and lastly is from this uh, PBNRT, you can also uh, relate with the uh, rectants and also the products. Okay, so uh, by using the gas stoichiometry. So, let's say if you want to get the products uh, mass, you can get that from uh, findings from the rectants information given. Okay, so, ni semua dah sudah kan? And then... After that, you have learned on the Dalton's law. So, Dalton's law is basically uh, emphasized on the partial pressure. Okay. So, partial pressure meaning that uh, when you have the gas mixture, okay, you mix uh, all gases there. So, when you add or uh, sum up all the partial pressures, you will get the P total. Okay. You sum up, you can dapat P total. If you, let's say you do not know the partial pressure of each gases, you can calculate by using, okay, let's say this formula, partial pressure of A, gas A is equal to mole fraction of gas A multiplied with the total pressure. Or else, cara lain dia, you also can get from the PV NRT itself. So, cuma kita spesifikkan kat sini, the pressure of A, so you must calculate with the mole of A. Okay, so same goes to other gases lah. Tak kisah lah ada banyak mana pun, ada B, ada C. So you can calculate by using that one. And then this Dalton's law also, um, the application we applied for the collecting gas over water. Okay, so kalau you nampak kat sini, we collect gas. Uh, basically, the gas collected over water. So dia lalu ikut sini. So we collect the gas on the tube. Closed tube, okay, so gas yang kita collect kat sini, the pressure that we got is actually the P total where it is actually the P gas that we want include the P of vapor, water vapor. Okay, so we need to uh, subtract with the water to get the P gas. Okay, so ini apa yang kita belajar sebelum ni lah. Okay. So for today, uh, basically uh, you will learn on the Kinetic molecular theory of gases 4.4 and then 4.5 uh, Graham's law. Okay. 
uh, and 4.6 real gas. Okay, so for kinetic molecular theory of gases, at the end of this uh, subtopic, eh, uh, you should be able to explain the postulates or assumptions. So postulates means assumption applied in the KMT. Okay, so I simplify kind of KMT, kinetic molecular theory. And then explain the gas laws where we uh, have the Boyle's, Charles and Avogadro's law in terms of molecular theory. Actually, this one uh, you have learned a little bit um, dalam penerangan yang um, earlier for the Boyle's, Charles and Avogadro's. Cuma yang ni kita lebih specific on the kinetic. Kinetic maksudnya dia punya speed, dia punya collision, collision theory lah basically ya. Yeah. Okay and then you should be able also to relate the temperature or molecular mass with the speed of molecule by using maxwell boltzmann distribution curve okay so this one this curve okay maxwell boltzmann uh, actually by this two person ni okay you should uh, you should know on how to explain the curve to fahamkan to understand the curve and explain and also how to uh, draw the curve Okay, you can belajar lah this one eh. Okay, so first we will go to the postulate. Okay, tadi kita cakap apa? Assumption. So, uh, till now, till 4.4 ni, actually we are um, looking or we are more uh, related uh, the gases with the ideal situation. That's why kita namakan the ideal gas. Okay, so in uh, like I have said uh, previously so many times that uh, there are no gases that is ideal. Tak ada satu pun yang ideal sebenarnya. Semuanya sebenarnya tak ideal. Okay. So uh, ideal means that kita kita buat some assumption. Okay. Ataupun we call it as postulate. Okay. So postulate number one. Particle volume is negligible relative to the size of the container. Okay. Remember when you want to get the volume pv equals to nrt this volume is actually the volume of the container okay kita tak ambil volume of the gas okay sebab apa we have we come up with this postulate where the particle volume is negligible kita abaikan volume of the gas okay nanti kita akan explain benda ni lebih detail dalam tajuk real gas lah kenapa kita abaikan okay and then postulate number two the intermolecular forces is negligible. Okay, I hope you still remember IMF intermolecular forces that you have learned in chapter 3. Okay, when you have um, uh, gases, tak kisahlah dia uh, uh, polar or non-polar, dia boleh ada at least London dispersion forces, right? Okay, so benda ni pun sebenarnya uh, for this uh, KMT, okay, theory dia, uh, the IMF is negligible. Kita abaikan je. Okay. And then postulate number three. Molecules move randomly in straight line in all directions and at various speed. Okay. In this case, you belajar dah selama ni kan. Daripada zaman sekolah lagi saya rasa. Uh, the gases will move randomly secara rawak. Dia lurus tapi dia secara rawak. Okay. In all directions and at various speeds because of every inch of gases, dia akan ada dia punya specific molar mass. Because of that specific molar mass, dia ada berat dia masing-masing. So that's why speed dia pun berbeza setiap gas. Okay. And then postulate number four. When molecules collide with one another, the, collis the collisions are elastic. So let's say lah dia berlanggar juga sesama dia, collision tu elastic. Sebab kalau dia tak elastic, akan wujudnya intermolecular forces. Okay. And then postulate number five, the average kinetic energy of a molecule is proportional to the absolute temperature. So of course lah, if you uh, increase the temperature, um, the kinetic energy also will increase. Okay, <clears throat> so what is the relationship of the KMT to the gas law? Okay, so for Boyce law, okay, so uh, everything, um, kalau... Uh, gas ni kita akan relate dengan pressure kan Okay So for the KMT When we talking about kinetic So of course we are talking about the movement of the gases Kinetic energy kan Movement So um, The pressure Is actually uh, Directly proportional to the collision rate Kadar pelanggaran uh, Of the gas with wall of the container Maksudnya Berapa rate 
uh, gas tu langgar bekas tu uh, is directly proportional to pressure. Maksudnya kalau pressure tinggi, the collision rate also will increase. Okay, so this collision rate is directly proportional to the density. Okay, so uh, dalam slide saya ada pembetulan ni, saya tak sure lah slide you all dah dibetulkan ke belum. Dia bukan collision rate a number density. Dia actually uh, apa? directly proportional. So a ni buang eh. Okay, so directly proportional to the density maksudnya lagi dense. Okay, density kan uh, related to the mass of a uh, volume kan. So mass tu related to the number of molecules, number of particles over volume. Volume of the container kan. So that's why uh, kalau density tu lagi tinggi, lagi dense, collision rate pun akan lagi tinggi. Okay, and then number of density itself is actually inversely proportional to the volume. Sebab kan dia uh, unit dia gram per ml for example. So Okay, volume lagi besar, of course dia lagi kurang dense. Kan? Okay. So that's why when we are relate, re, uh, relating all of this, so that's why P is actually inversely proportional to volume. Ni kita relatekan dengan kinetic eh, movement of the electrons. Okay. For Charles Law. Okay. Uh, sama juga when we want to relate with the pressure. So pressure uh, directly proportional to the collision rate. So this collision rate is directly, uh, ni pun sama eh, buka E eh, is directly proportional to average kinetic energy. Okay, sebab kita Charles nak relatekan dengan temperature kan, average kinetic energy is actually directly proportional to temperature. Okay, so that's why P is directly proportional to temperature. Kalau you tengok gambar ni, okay, uh, this is the normal situation lah, the normal pressure. So let's say lah P gas is equals to P external. Pressure kat luar dengan pressure kat dalam sama. Okay, the normal pressure. So, bila kita increase the external pressure, increase maksudnya macam piston tu kan, you tolak. Okay, so what will happen? The volume will decrease, right? Okay, asalnya jarak, okay, the distance between the gas with the container, wall container, panjang lah. For example, maybe uh, 1 cm. And then, bila kita bagi pressure, so volume makin kecil, so the distance now will become shorter. Okay. So ini sebenarnya kita nak relatekan dengan this uh, boy's law lah. Okay, so higher P external causes a lower volume which causes more collision. Okay, next is Avogadro's law. So again, pressure is directly proportional to the collision rate with the wall or the container. So collision rate is directly proportional to the number of density. Sama macam yang tadi kan. Okay, cuma now kita nak relatekan dengan number of mole. Tadi kan kita relate dengan volume. Okay, untuk Boyce Law. Dia inversely proportional. Number density. But here is directly proportional to the mole. So that's why pressure is directly proportional to the mole. Okay. Kalau kita tengok gambar ni, macam ni sama juga. Let's say you have the normal pressure here. P gas equals to P atmosphere. So let's say lah uh, we add more uh, molecules of gases. Gas ni kita tambah at fixed temperature. Uh, maksudnya uh, volume tu masih kekal sama. So dalam ni dah jadi very packed. Okay so that's why P gas here uh, will become uh, higher than P atmosphere. So sampailah dia uh, tertolak, dia berlanggar-langgar tertolak. So the piston akan naik ke atas sampai dia nak jadi stable balik. Okay sebab uh, molekul dah bertambah kan. So of course kalau bertambah dua kali ganda akan bertambah lah dua kali ganda daripada yang asal kan. Dia akan V will increases until the P gas equals to P atmosphere. Okay. So next is Dalton's law of partial pressure. So of course because of uh, when you are mentioning about partial pressure is actually uh, the mixture of gases kan. So dalam satu bekas tu let's say ada gas ni, ada gas ni, ada gas. So ada macam-macam gas lah. Ada combination. But we assume that the molecules do not attract or repel one another. Maksudnya dia, dia dia sendiri je. Dia langgar dinding je. Dia tak langgar sama dia. Sebab kalau dia langgar sama dia akan ada intermolecular forces. Okay. So P exerted by one type of molecule is unaffected by the presence of another gas. So maksudnya you nak ambil tadi kalau ada gas setiap satu ni maknanya this is the pressure. Uh, let's say helium, this is the pressure of helium. This is the pressure of oxygen. So this is the pressure of nitrogen. So dia masing-masing lah unaffected by presence of another gas eh. 
so tadi bila kita relatekan dengan all the um, uh, gas laws, okay, and also Dalton's law. So uh, now you want to uh, talk about the molecular speed, okay? Again, bila kita cerita, cerita pasal kinetik, kita akan cerita pasal speed lah sebenarnya, speed of the gas, okay? So all the gas molecule in the sample can travel at different speed. Again, saya cakap tadi, different speed because of they have different molar mass, of course speed dia pun akan berbeza-beza. Okay, so the distribution of speed follows a, a statistical pattern, we call it as average velocity. Kita ambil dalam uh, dalam terms average ya. Eh. Okay, so nak calculate dia is how to get this average velocity, we will use the root mean square uh, velocity method ataupun root mean square method. Okay, URMS. Okay, so the formula is the square root of the three uh, RT over molar mass. Okay, where uh, this average velocity, the R value here we will get uh, calculate using the 8.314. Okay, this one eh, 8.14. Miss, boleh guna 0 0.082 lah. Uh, in this case, kalau you guna... Uh, uh, tak sesuai sebab you tak boleh nak cancel the units nanti. Sebab nanti oh. last kali uh, the the average velocity unit dia is in meter per second. Sebab speed kan? Ha, that's why oh. uh, even dalam uh, PVNRT pun saya prefer untuk you all guna 0.0821. Sebab this one unit dia liter atmosphere per mol Kelvin. Basically selalunya uh, value akan bagi dalam unit-unit yang ini. Paling pun uh, atmosphere dia akan bagi tor ke uh, mm mercury ke. You just tukar je. Okay. Kalau yang ini pun sama. Kalau you guna 0.0821 everything you need to change. Well I pun tak sure nak change part mana. Okay. So better to use this one lah. Okay. Okay. Lepas tu um, uh, satu lagi macam maybe nak boleh nak senang ingat uh, 8.314 ni um, you need the joule. Joule per Kelvin per mol. Joule per Kelvin per mol kan. So joule ni biasanya memang dia akan relate, uh, related with the um, apa energy. Okay. So energy ni anything related to macam ni kalau dalam case kat sini kita nak kira velocity kan. Velocity ni melibatkan speed ni akan melibatkan energy lah. Okay so that's why kita akan pakai R8.314. And there's satu lagi the molar mass itself also you need to uh, convert the unit to kilogram per mole. Okay so kita tengok contoh eh. Calculate the room in square ni okay dia suruh you calculate untuk helium and also nitrogen. Okay, in uh, meter, meter per second ni. Okay, you are using this one, right? 8.314 and then molar, uh, molar mass of helium. 4 gram per mole, don't forget to convert to kilogram per mole. Okay, so let's say lah you masukkan semua ni. Basically sebenarnya unit dia you tak akan dapat directly meter per second. Okay, cuma kat sini ada conversion unit. Saya tak berapa ingat sebab benda ni uh, dalam chemistry kita tak tekankan sangat uh, convert-convert unit ni. Tapi um, basically molar mass lah okay. Sebab ni dia letak dalam joule. I'm not sure why. Sebab uh, saya tak boleh edit benda ni. Sebab benda ni daripada buku. So tak, saya tak sure kenapa dia tukar joule. Okay contohlah kan unit dia kilogram per mole tadi kan. Ada somewhere yang dia akan cancel. So uh, sorry cancel memang cancel lah. This one akan cancel. This one bila you combine, if I'm not mistaken lah, you combine all together, unit day is equals to ms negative 1. You can check this one, um, maybe you can google or refer to the books or I think this one uh, lebih lebih ada dekat buku fizik. Okay, cuma yang penting lah macam ni eh. Kalau you uh, dapat uh, soalan root mean square, the most important thing is R8.314, you use this value. And the molar mass, you must convert to kilogram per mole. Then jawapan akhir dia, ms negative 1 is the value. Okay. So I hope uh, you clear about this. And satu lagi, okay, this is helium, right? And then dia kata nitrogen molecules. Okay, for example, nitrogen. Okay. Bila kita cerita pasal gas, yang ni tak ada tak apa lagi sebab dia memang ada mention about molecules. So of course, this is N2. Helium atoms. This is only helium. 
Kalau dah dia tak mention nitrogen molecules but dia mention nitrogen gas saja. So nitrogen gas you have to remember that always gas nitrogen dalam bentuk dui atom. Maksudnya dia mesti N2. Okay. Yang sudah ramai uh, selalu buat salah ni uh, adalah bila dia lupa nak darab dua. Nanti dia buat nitrogen 14 je. 14. So kat situ salah lah. Okay. Because of the molecules. So sama lah klorin ke, oksigen ke, hidrogen ke. Okay. Mesti multiply with two lah. Okay. So the rest uh, you just follow the formula. You masukkan 8.314. And then temperature must be in Kelvin and this one also is kilogram per mole. Okay, mesti make sure dalam kilogram per mole. Then you akan terus dapat jawapan. So basically uh, untuk yang ni paling pun kita akan nak jawapan dalam uh, uh, maksudnya unit tu dekat final lah. Kita tak tengok sangat dekat part uh, working solution eh. Okay, so far clear eh. Yang penting you remember this formula lah. Okay. You are MS 3R, uh, square root of 3RT over MM in kilogram per mole. Okay. Next is the molecular speed and related to the Maxwell Boltzmann distribution curve. Maxwell Boltzmann eh sebenarnya. Dia combination two persons yang um, study on this uh, curve. Okay. So ada dua jenis curve kat sini. First, you must know that uh, absolute temperature increase, K lah kan. Kalau dia increase, the average velocity also will increase. So velocity, average eh, will also increase. Okay, so kita tengok dulu graph yang pertama on the left side. First, um, we, are, we fix uh, the molecules, nitrogen gas. But we change the temperature. Let's say like we have three different uh, temperatures. We have 100 Kelvin, 300 Kelvin and 700 Kelvin. Okay, first of all, I need you to uh, understand that the area below the curve, tahu eh, luas bawah curve ni is actually the number of molecules. Bilangan molecules of nitrogen tu. Okay, sekejap eh, saya draw dulu lah nak pergi nampak eh. Okay. Ini yang hijau adalah milik 300 ni punya eh. And then we have another one is 700. Ini apa? Warna merah. Okay, I hope you nampak lah eh. Saya lorekkan ni ikut tiga graf yang berbeza. Okay, so saya explain balik tadi. The area under the curve is actually the number of molecules. Okay, meaning that sekarang molecules awak fix kan? Fix, nitrogen. So maksudnya molecule dia sama. Okay, macam mana kita nak bezakan yang when you when we increase the temperature, the speed is uh, also increase kan? Velocity increase. Kalau you tengok kat sini, graph dia kat sini molecular speeds. Dekat X. So maksudnya as you go further to the right, so the speed will increase. Kan? So that's why kalau you tengok kat sini, 700, paling ujung dia dekat sini lah lebih kurang. 1500 meter per second. 300 around here, okay, I hope you can see this one. And 100 is around here. So nampak tak? Ujung dia tu. So itu adalah maximum speed dia. So kita nak tunjuk yang sebenarnya um, that uh, when we have different temperatures, uh, as we go higher temperatures, absolute temperature, eh, okay, the speed will also increase. Okay, tapi number of mole dia tak berubah. So that's why dia buagi bentuk curve macam ni. So for 100k, curve dia akan a bit narrow and very sharp. Sharp and narrow, tinggi. And then 300 dia rendah sikit, dia broad sikit, dia rendah sikit dan dia ke kanan sikit. While for 700, dia lagi broad and then dia lagi ke kanan. Okay, you kena betul-betul fahamkan lah eh, macam mana nak baca graf ni. And then how to draw. Sebab uh, pernah ada soalan suruh you draw lah. 
Okay, so here you can uh, explain from this um, uh, curve, more molecules are moving faster at higher temperature. As you look at this lah, lebih banyak. Area yang lebih ke arah kanan tu kan lagi banyak. Okay. And then, satu lagi contoh, let's say we fix the temperature. Sekarang temperature pula fix, but we have different um, gases. We have chlorine, nitrogen and helium. So different gases will have different molar mass. Okay, molar mass yang paling rendah is helium and then nitrogen and then chlorine. Yang paling berat. Kalau you tengok kat sini, helium paling laju. Logically, here yeah, dia akan stop kat sini kan. Kalau nitrogen dekat sini, chlorine paling paling rendah lah speed dia. Okay, so again... Uh, speed is actually related to the molar mass Berat dia Okay So lighter molecules are moving faster So of course uh, helium is the lighter molecules Dia paling broad dan dia paling laju Curve dia tu paling ke kanan Okay sebab dia paling laju And then chlorine dia paling berat So of course dia paling narrow and very sharp And then dia more to the left side lah Okay, so I hope you uh, you clear on this uh, curve. Okay, cuba kita tengok contoh ni, check point 12. The average velocity URMS of an unknown molecule at 1 to 7 degrees Celsius is 600 meter per second. Calculate URMS at 1, 1 to 7 degrees Celsius. Okay, cuba kira ni. Guna formula mana? Ni yang tadi sebelum kita masuk velocity lagi. Eh, sorry, URMS lah, average velocity eh. URMS is equals to square root 3RT over mm. Now, this is an unknown molecule. We do not know the molar mass, right? But for the first information, we know the velocity. So, boleh tak kita cari dekat sini? Ah, boleh kan? So, ada dua step kat sini. Meaning that you need to find the molar mass first and then after that you can find the average velocity at different temperature. Cuba kira jap. Dapat tak sama. Okay, boleh dapat ke? Uh, berapa molar mass dia? Eh? So here, okay. Bila kita kira, ani molar mass dia kan? So kita dapat uh, URMS dia. The molar mass is 0.0277 kilogram per mol. Okay, sebab ni kira. Terbalikkan je lah kita sekarang nak dapatkan eh, Benda ni ada kita nak dapatkan the molar mass Okay So kalau ikutkan Kalau you just kira you akan dapat straight away in kilogram per mol And then yang value ni you masukkan balik pula dalam another URMS punya value It's just that we change the uh, temperature Okay make sure tukar dalam Kelvin lah So here you change to 1400 Kelvin So you dapat dia punya value Okay, I hope you clear eh, with uh, this one. Okay, uh, uh, any questions so far untuk apa ni tadi? KMT and you, uh, basically URMS lah for the calculation. So far okay eh? Ni mak saya masih straightforward lah eh. Uh -huh. Okay, thank you. So now we move to the uh, 4.5 which is the Graham's Law and its application.
So uh, at the end of this subtopic, okay, you should be able to state the Graham's law. So apa itu Graham's law? And use it to calculate, of course, there are the calculation juga, the rate of diffusion and effusion of the gas. Okay, so what are the difference between diffusion and effusion? So diffusion is actually a movement of gases from high concentration to low concentration where it's actually the spreading of gases to occupy all the space available to them. Okay, kalau tengok contoh kat sini lah. Okay, ada dalam satu bekas. Let's say kita tutup lah. The tutup tu memang gas tu tak boleh nak bergerak lah. Okay, so once we open, okay. Uh, the barrier here, kita buka so dia akan move to the uh, low concentration yang kosong ni lah. So dia akan move around. So this one we call it as diffusion. Diffusion ni paling simple saya suka bagi explanation on uh, when you want to spray the perfume okay uh, on your body. So you spray perfume lepas tu you ada uh, apa you punya roommate jauh sikit. So dia lambat sikit kan, dia tak akan dapat terus bau, dia lambat. So dia kat sini konsep dia diffusion. You spray so high concentration on yourself, on your body. So lama-lama dia akan sebab dia gas kan, so dia akan start move. So dia akan pergi pada kawan you, kawan you akan bau lah. Okay, akan bau wangi tu dalam masa berapa second. Ha, so itu adalah diffusion. Dia move from the high concentration to uh, low concentration. Okay, while for effusion, okay, the movement of gases from high pressure to low pressure, meaning that molecules escape from uh, through a small hole into a vacuum. So dalam kes ni dia bergerak juga, tapi uh, melalui one small hole, tiny hole. Kita lubangkan satu, so dia akan keluar passing through one by one. Okay, so here uh, dia bergerak secara effusion kat sini because of um, pressure lah. Kat sini pressure dia tinggi kan sebab ada banyak gas so dia nak gerak ke kanan kat sini so dia 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 have to pass through the small hole right. kalau dia pass through lubang-lubang small hole ni ni ah ni we call it as effusion okay so you rasa contoh apa yang paling sesuai untuk effusion kalau tadi diffusion kita cerita pasal um, perfume kan Uh, effusion ni mungkin you boleh apply kalau you kentut kan <laughs> okay so ni one of the examples lah okay so um, apa formula dia kita nak calculate kan okay so generally this law is used to compare the difference in rates okay kita banyak pakai rates kadar eh, between two gases kita ada dua jenis gases we want to compare Ah, uh, you boleh guna Um, uh, formula, uh, sorry, uh, untuk this uh, diffusion and effusion ni. Okay, and here uh, law, this uh, Graham's law, kita assume lah, kita buat assumption that the temperature and the pressure are the same. Okay, ni assumption lah. We need to assume so that we can use this formula. Okay, so uh, this uh, Graham's law, uh, <coughs> efficient diffusion ni, It state that the rate, okay, for both gases are in, is inversely proportional to the square root of the molar mass. Kalau you tengok sini, inversely proportional meaning that rate 1 over rate 2 is equal to molar mass 2 over 1. So, the inversely proportional. Okay, dia terbalik eh. So, <coughs> another example lah for diffusion eh. Kalau kita mention about let's say we want to compare between two gases, okay, diffusion tadi apa? Daripada high concentration to low concentration kan? So pergerakan tu kalau kita nak bezakan, we can uh, compare the gases with high molecular weight or high molar mass tend to, tend to diffuse slowly than gases with low molar mass. Maksudnya yang berat akan bergerak lebih uh, slow lah daripada yang ringan. Okay, for example, Contoh kita ada ammonia and uh, HCl. This one is not uh, hydrochloric acid. This is uh, hydrogen chloride gas. Okay, so let's say you mix NH3 with HCl. The product should be NH4Cl. Okay, fume, uh, white fume lah. You akan dapat white fume. Okay, um, so here I think it's not proper to put as solid lah. This is a white fume eh. So kita nak tengok bila kita open the uh, uh, bottle ni, kita buka so suddenly we can see a uh, white fume 
dekat area HCL. So it means that, okay, this is uh, the white fume yang kita dapat ni lah eh, white fume. This means that NH3 ni kan dia lebih ringan, 17 gram per mole as compared to HCL 36 gram per mole. Dia uh, move faster towards HCL. So bila move faster, dia terus react with the HCL here and you akan dapat white fume on top of the bottle of HCL. So that's why here we can conclude that ammonia is lighter and it diffuses faster. Okay? You can try this uh, experiment not by using this uh, ammonia HCL lah. Uh, cuma you kena pakai a few a few persons here. Maybe uh, again you nak maybe you nak compare satu seorang spray perfume seorang try kentut. So orang yang kat ujung tu you rasa dia bau mana dulu. So bau yang dia dapat tu yang dia bau dulu uh, maknanya kita tahu itu lebih ringan. Okay so yang lambat tu lebih berat. Ah, uh, You can compare lah on that one eh. Okay itu just eksperimen suka-suka lah. Okay. Okay so um, uh, all of this uh, deficient or effusion eh. Okay so basically you will use the, uh, the same formula. Okay. Formula dia masih sama. Cuma kalau effusion ni kan kita uh, nak passing through a porous barrier. Maksudnya nak melalui a tiny hole, hole kan. So the longer the time it takes the slower the rate. Okay, sekejap. Sorry, nak bersin. Okay, tak jadi pula. Okay, so the longer the time it takes, the slower the rate. Faham eh, maksud ayat ni? Maksudnya, lagi lama masa tu diambil, rate makin slow lah. Betul tak? So, maksudnya T increase, eh time eh. T, T rup si eh, time. Kalau T rup besar, uh, temperature kan? T tinggi, so rate decrease. Okay, so that's why uh, uh, the rate is actually inversely proportional to the time required for effusion. Okay, so um, okay, kita tahu tadi rate uh, is inversely proportional to molar mass. Kan, inversely proportional. But rate also is inversely proportional to time. Tadi kan, rate is inversely proportional to time. So if, you, let's say if you want to... Uh, um, Compare the molar mass with time, not with the rate. Now time is directly proportional to the molar mass. Square root of the molar mass lah. Okay, I hope you clear with this eh. Kenapa kita relatekan dengan time, sometimes uh, macam contoh soalan lah. Dia tak akan bagi rate, dia bagi time. So, you kena guna uh, which one is more suitable lah. Kalau rate, you pakai rate lah. Kalau time, you pakai time eh. Okay, tengok contoh kat sini eh. Carbon and hydrogen is found to effuse through a porous barrier in 1.5 minute. Okay, basically ayat ni sebenarnya tak apa-apa clear. Uh, a gas. Saya rasa macam ada missing juga ayat ni. A mixture of gas. Oh, sorry. Bukan a mixture of gas. A gas. Hmm. A gas consists of carbon and hydrogen. Okay, maknanya CX, CX. Uh, Allah, ya. Yeah. CX a consists a gas consists of carbon and hydrogen. So dalam kurungan CXHY. Okay. Macam ni lah eh. So maksudnya gas tu adalah ada ada C dengan H. Okay. It's found to effuse through a porous barrier in 1.5 minute. Under the same conditions of temperature and pressure, it takes an equal volume of bromine vapor 4.73 minute to effuse through the same barrier. Okay. Maksudnya condition sama-sama kalau uh, bromine vapor Ah, uh, tu masa dia. 4.73 minit. Calculate the molar mass of the unknown gas which is this one. Okay. Unknown gas eh. Okay. And identify the gas. So apa kita nak guna? So of course kita akan guna formula lah. Okay. Formula this one. Okay. Sekejap eh. Kat sini ada pembetulan sikit. T1, T1. Ah ni eh. Rate is inversely proportional to the time right? Okay. So this one is not T1. This is T2. 
T yang ni HT1 Okay Saya sengaja tak betulkan uh, dalam slide sebab saya takut saya lupa So saya betulkan kat sini I hope uh, slide you Saya tak sure lah dari betulkan tak Kalau tak you betulkan lah eh Takut you confuse pula Okay So um, now uh, we are not uh, getting to this rate Okay sebab dia tak ada bagi pun info pasal rate Dia bagi dalam minit Masa kan So we will just use uh, T2 over T1 Ah, Kat sini tak ada masalah memang betul lah Kat sini je typing error Okay so 4.73 is T1 uh, Which is the bromine This is the bromine Okay yang ni letak as T1 So this is the molar mass of Bromine gas I hope you clear eh ah, Ni contoh dia tak mention the molecules dia tahu. Dia mention about bromine vapor je. So you have to remember it's not BR, it is BR2. Okay, vapor eh. So mesti darab dua. Bromine tu, uh, the molar mass, the atom tu darab dua. Okay, kalau tak habis salah semua. Okay, so T2 is the <coughs> molar mass for the, un uh, sorry, is the time for the unknown gas. Okay, let's say lah you dah substitute, you gedebuk-gedebuk semua dah kira. So this is the molar mass. Okay, so you dah dapat dah molar mass. Dia dah, dah minta molar mass kan? Okay, now you need to identify the gas. So how to identify? So 16.7.07 and you have CXHY. This is the unknown gas. C berat dia 12. H is 1. So let's say if you put it as C2, now the berat dia akan jadi 24. Dia dah lebih daripada berat total. So maksudnya C now is C1. H Y. Tak tahu apa. To get this H, so kita tahu 16. So maksudnya 16 tolaklah 12 berat carbon then you get 4. Hydrogen the mass is 1 plus minus lah eh. Gram per mole. So kat sini nak dapatkan 4, you can just multiply by 4. So that's why the gas is actually sebenarnya methane gas which is it is a CH4. Okay. So ini contohlah eh. Uh, macam saya cakap tu dia bagi uh, gas tu uh, dalam tulisan ayat je eh. Dia tak, dia tak tulis the molecules. I hope you be careful with that lah. Okay. <coughs> Another example. A mixture of helium and methane uh, is placed in an efficient apparatus. Calculate the ratio of the efficient rates. Rates. Okay, so uh, again, sebab dia nak rates dan dia nak dalam bentuk ratio saja. Okay, you come up with this formula. Rate 1 over rate 2 is equals to square root molar mass 2 over molar mass 1. So, dia mesti inversely proportional. Okay, here tak kisahlah you nak letak mana-mana pun. Let's say lah you letak helium kat atas. So, of course the molar mass will become at the lower part. As I show kat bawah, the molar mass is on top. Okay, if you calculate the rate helium to CH4 is 2. Okay, my question is what if I put rate of CH4 over rate of helium? Would the answer will be, will be, will be the same as this one? No. Okay, tak sama kan? So this is a ratio right? So this one is 2 over 1. So now it here will become 1 over 2. Dia akan jadi terbalik. Okay. So ada satu jawapan yang betul. Both are correct. Okay. Ini untuk case soalan yang when they ask about the ratio. Dia maksudnya dia terlalu general. So we know that okay the ratio of macam, macam cara awak baca stoichiometry lah ratio kan. Uh, maksudnya dalam kes kat sini, ratio helium towards CH4 is 2 uh, two over 1. Kalau you baca terbalik, ratio helium towards CH4 is, eh sorry terbalik. The ratio CH4 towards helium is 1 over 2. Okay. So um, tak perlu nak macam pening kepala siapa kat atas, apa kat bawah. We always uh, 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 accept uh, both. Okay. Cuma biasanya lah kalau kita buat soalan uh, trick dia, okay, uh, siapa yang keluar dulu biasanya kita letak dia dulu. Tapi bukan bermaksud if you letak dia dulu, dia salah. No. Okay, cuma kita boleh kata uh, the main answer uh, yang akan keluar dulu is this one. 
and then barulah kita ada another choice option answer. Okay, so <coughs> kita akan uh, terima both eh. <coughs> okay, cuba jawab soalan siap poin 12 ni. Ni lebih straightforward lah. Dia just ask to calculate the molar mass. Um, <coughs> uh, molar mass tanpa minta awak nak buat ratio ataupun nak minta awak buat um, cari apa cari apa molecular formula ke apa okey cuba jawab jap Okay, so in general, rate 1 over rate 2 is equals to <coughs> molar mass 2 over molar mass 1. Tapi dia dalam bentuk time. So here kalau time, you just T2 over T1 lah. So ambil yang ini saja kan. Okay. Okay, yang ni eh. So, biasa je kalau soalan macam ni pada saya tak ada isu uh, if you letak siapa atas siapa bawah. Sebab you nak specific dapatkan uh, that uh, unknown uh, molar mass of the gas kan. So, tak ada isu lah for me. Kalau ratio tadi, ya yeah, uh, macam dia akan dapat two different answers lah. <coughs> okay, so clear eh. So, this is the answer lah. Okay. So, uh, before I go to the real guess, uh, any question you want to ask about this uh, Graham's law? <coughs> Ada apa-apa nak tanya tak? No. Okay. So far okay eh? Yes. Yes? Uh, will the molar mass be given? Sorry? Will the molar mass be given? Molar mass? Uh, uh, sebab ni unknown Okay you mean for the hydrogen lah contoh macam ni kan Patutnya macam soalan you buat untuk test tu kan Patutnya dia akan bagilah uh, oh. Kalau kalau dia tak bagi pun uh, Don't worry selalunya dekat belakang Sebab saya pun tak sure lah sekarang ni uh, kita ni berubah-ubah kan tapi as far as I know your final should be uh, um, written maksudnya bukan virtual lagi bukan you kena submit online maksudnya you have to sit for exam duduk dekat dalam bilik exam jawab so kalau kita guna cara tu maksudnya sama dengan the previous uh, method where bila dapat kertas tu paling belakang tu ada dia tak akan bagi apa tu predict table tapi dia akan bagi uh, list of atom with the molar mass and proton number if I'm not mistaken lah. Tapi molar mass tu confirm ada lah. Okay so don't worry lah. <coughs> okay any question? Untuk yang lain. Ini pasal sebab check point kan. So dia assume uh, you can find by yourself. Sama lah kadang-kadang so, uh, apa dia uh, constant apa-apa kadang lupa bagi. Sebenarnya kalau ikutkan constant macam untuk uh, collecting gas over water ke vapor pressure tu dia akan bagilah. Okay tak perlu hafal benda tu eh. Okay. So now okay uh, we will go to the uh, 4.6 eh, real gases. 
the deviation from ideal behavior. Okay, so at the end of this subtopic, okay, you should be able to explain quantitatively. Maksudnya, bila quantitatively, this is related to the calculation. Okay, akan ada formula. The deviation from the ideal behavior at high pressure and low temperature. Okay, and then use Van der Waals equation. You you kena pandai guna lah. So, but you kena tahu apa equation Van der Waals ni to solve the quantitative problems. Okay. So, before kita masuk real gas ni. Okay, up, semua benda yang you belajar up until 4.5 ni, efficient, deficient ni, semuanya kita assume dia adalah ideal gas. Okay, sampai 4.6 barulah kita masuk pada real gas. So first sebelum kita masuk real gas, I hope you still remember apa yang menyebabkan kita assume dia ideal gas. Macam saya cakap tadi, saya baru cakap tadi kan. So real gas sebenarnya, uh, sorry, ideal gas sebenarnya tak wujud pun. Okay, tak perfect lah kan. So gas ni sebenarnya tak perfect juga. Okay. So ideal gas, kenapa ada juga ideal gas equation? It because we make some assumption. Okay. Assumption yang yang akan memberi efek yang menyebabkan dia deviate daripada ideal situation where end up dia tetap kena pakai equation untuk real gas is point number one and point number two daripada uh, kinetic molecular theory tadi. Okay. Kan ada a few assumptions. Okay. So point number one where we we state that a gas has negligible forces between its constituent atoms or molecules where it is it has no interparticle interaction ataupun no intermolecular forces. Okay. So here awak akan belajar balik or relate balik dengan what you have learned on chapter 3 intermolecular forces. Okay, so negligible forces maksudnya uh, kita abaikan kan sebelum ni. Ada gas tu kita, dia tak ada interaction so kita abaikan. Okay, and uh, assumption number two, gas atoms or molecules have negligible volume. Meaning that it has zero volume of gas particle. So kita assume, remember I always said that to get the PV and RT, the value of V ni kat sini, we will get the value of the container. We will not get the value of the uh, gas or of the particles. Sebab apa kita tak ambil kat sini sebab kita abaikan. Okay. Ni semua assumption sahaja. Assumption for the ideal gas. Maka datanglah PV equals to <coughs> NRT. Equation for ideal gas. But if you, um, apa kita panggil eh, uh, if you face two conditions, okay, apa yang menyebabkan tiba-tiba uh, dia tak jadi ideal? Maksudnya ada dua conditions that you need to take care. When it undergoes high pressure and low temperature, okay, the gas is no longer ideal gas. Okay. So a real gas here does not behave as an ideal gas due to this uh, deviation occurs at high pressure and low temperature. Okay, saya repeat balik eh. High pressure and low temperature. So that's why dekat sini learning account tadi ada mention about this one. High pressure and low temperature. Okay, so at high pressure, the distance between particles is too small and the molecules are too crowded together while for low temperature the gas molecules begin to attract each other. So both this one I will explain in details later. Okay so at this slide the main thing that I, I want you to know is the ideal gas is no longer ideal when it undergoes high pressure or at low temperature. So at both this condition lah. Okay, so the uh, under both, uh, both of these conditions, the volume of particles become significant thus gas can be liquefied. Maksudnya, volume particles sebelum ni kita abaikan kan? So now dia dah tak diabaikan, significant sampai menyebabkan gas tu can turn into liquid. Daripada gas, dia berubah jadi liquid. Sebab 
volume tu dah jadi nampak. Asalnya kan gas tu dia bergerak uh, random kan secara rawak dia langgar all the walls of the container. Now bila dia ada interaction so you dah nampak uh, that volume dah jadi significant you dah tak boleh abaikan so dia dah makin rapat sampaikan dia boleh jadi liquid. Okay. So kalau you tengok graf ni <coughs> okay at high pressure The volume is higher than predicted. So this is molar volume. Okay. So so this is molar volume. Okay. Kalau you tengok ideal gas sepatutnya. Okay. Uh, low pressure kan. Asalnya uh, sini pressure kan. So low pressure. So you bergerak makin ke, ke kanan. Makin high pressure. This is the ideal gas. Predicted. Tapi bila you buat eksperimen sebenar argon ni dia ada deviation. Okay. Deviate lah dia ter, as, ter lari sikit daripada yang asal. So the volume is higher than predicted. Dia ternaik sikit volume dia. Okay. While uh, at low temperature pressure is lower than predicted. So now here is pressure versus temperature. So as you move further this is higher temperature kan. So kita tahu kalau um, uh, real gas ni P tinggi T rendah. So maksudnya bila pada T rendah, so bila you pergi ke kiri, predicted yang warna merah ni. Tapi xenon ni, dia actually dia terturun sikit. Okay, daripada yang predicted. So that's why the pressure is lower than predicted here. Okay, ni contoh um, dia based on experimental value lah. Okay. So ha, ni kita kalau kita tengok the normal pressure, Okay, so this normal pressure, uh, uh, gas tu boleh bergerak secara uh, random, randomly. When we have the higher pressure, pressure apa ni? This is the external pressure. <coughs> pressure dari luar, kita bagi high pressure, so P tinggi. What will happen inside? Okay, you can, you boleh nampak significant portion of the gas. Dia dah makin nampak. Sebelum ni macam uh, ruang kosong ni yang kita panggil free volume sangat besar. Okay ni ruang kosong lah free volume kan. Sangat besar. So that's why dia macam tak signifikan sangat uh, volume of the gas. So that's why we will take the volume of the container. Okay but if we get the uh, we we apa apply a high pressure for this. So now dia dah jadi signifikan. So that's why significant portion of the total gas uh, leading deviation from the ideal behavior. Okay. So <coughs> okay, sebelum saya explain details kat sini, sini pun ada pembetulan. On this part, if I'm not mistaken, uh, yang asal is uh, 10 times 10 power 5 pascal. It's actually 1 sebab is equals to 1 ATM. <coughs> Bukan 10 eh. Betulkan dulu yang ni. Okay. So for this slide, okay, basically when we have the PV over NRT versus uh, pressure kan. Kalau dia equals to 1, is actually ideal gas. So that's why kalau you tengok kat sini, you dapat straight line. So yang merah ni, this is the ideal gas. Okay. So for the real gas, dia akan ada deviation from the straight line. Sama ada dia boleh ke bawah atau ke atas. You nampak helium yang warna purple dia ke atas. Deviate. Kalau you nampak uh, the rest tu, fluorine methane dia ke bawah but suddenly dia naik atas. Tak, tak ada isu lah. Yang penting dia deviate daripada straight line. Where supposedly you akan dapat sebenarnya straight line. Tiba dia ke bawah, ada kejap ke atas, ada kejap mungkin ke bawah lepas tu ke atas. Ha, macam tu. So itu ada division lah. Okay. So the ideal gas uh, can still be used to discuss the properties of real gas as long as the condition do not become too extreme. Too extreme meaning that maksudnya bila pressure awak dah terlalu tinggi kan. Remember P tinggi dia akan pergi pada real gas kan. So bila pressure tu terlalu tinggi dia akan jadi extreme so kita susah nak explain dari segi ideal gas. So that's why ideal gas ni is because of Uh, simple gases macam helium, nitrogen, methane are nearly ideal at room temperature and at 1 atm. Maksudnya you imagine 1 atm sebenarnya sangat dekat dengan kosong. So kat sini je yang dia lurus. Kalau you uh, beza je terus uh, uh, dia punya uh, pressure terus dia lari. 
Okay, you can imagine eh Around here saja yang sebenarnya behave nearly ideally Sebab satu ATM kan Kalau the rest tu dia dah jadi ni dah 200 pascal Kan Okay <coughs> So look at this checkpoint Between SO2 and CO2 Which gas will show a greater deviation from ideal behavior under the same condition? Temperature and pressure. Explain your answer. Okay, tak apa. Jawapan kan dah ada kat situ SO2. Tapi sebabkan yang ni lebih baik kita discuss sama-sama lah eh. The answer is SO2. Why? Because SO2 is a large molecule and has stronger intermolecular forces. So sebenarnya Benda ni, you have to know that Okay Okay, SO2 and CO2 So both have, uh, both are non-polar molecules Okay So, dia, dia can uh, cancel each other Okay So, they're both non-polar so I hope you still remember factors affecting the um, polarity of the molecules kan I mean uh, the intermolecular forces ke situ dia punya strength Kalau both non-polar so kita tengok daripada first criteria we are looking for the dia punya molar mass Okay So if you have the molar mass uh, sulfur is uh, higher than carbon Okay of course uh, it has a larger molecule so because it has higher Molar mass. So bila dia higher molar mass, dia ada dia ada stronger intermolecular forces. Although dia do dua London dispersion kan? Sebab dia non polar molecules. So both have London dispersion. But since uh, SO2 have higher molar mass, so of course dia menang lah. Okay. So in this case, uh, SO2 <coughs> yang uh, lagi uh, strong intermolecular forces akan show greater deviation from ideal behavior. Maksudnya in, uh, kan tadi saya mention dalam topik gases tu Kalau ikut ideal sepatutnya dia tak akan ada intermolecular forces Dia tak nak jumpa pun sesama dia So itu behave uh, macam ideal gas Tapi bila dia ada strong intermolecular forces kat sini Dia dah tak boleh nak behave as uh, ideal gas Okay so that's why lagi kuat intermolecular forces Lagi besar deviation dia greater deviation Maksudnya tadi kan, uh, ideal gas, you dapat straight line kan? PV over RT, you dapat straight line, ni ideal. So deviation tu maksudnya, okay, maybe CO2 contohlah dia ke bawah kan? So maybe CO2 dia deviate sikit. Tiba SO2 dia deviate lagi jauh. Jauh daripada straight line ni. Ha, itu maksud dia eh, greater deviation. Okay. <coughs> so, uh, this real gas, bila kita kata dia deviate, we know that the original uh, equation is actually PV equals to NRT This is the uh, ideal gas law So kalau kita kata dia deviate tu Kita akan guna Van der Waals equation I hope you also still remember this one Sebenarnya terms ni kita start pakai dekat mana? Bawah tajuk intermolecular forces Where Van der Waals ni kita ada London dispersion forces and also Dipole-dipole Forces kan? Van der Waals. Okay. So we modify this PV and RT to become this formula. Okay. So you have to remember this formula. Ada cara untuk ingat dia. Sebab kalau ni perasan NRT sama kat sini NRT. Yang kita ubah is on the PV side. Okay. So PV. So here P plus N square A over V square is actually P for the real, uh, for the ideal gas V minus MB is the volume. Maknanya kat sini ada dua correction terms to the ideal gas. Okay. So each uh, correction terms include a constant. Ada constant where we have A and also B. A and B is are uh, the constants. Okay. So the correction kat sini kalau you tengok tadi lah. So V becomes V minus NB and pressure becomes P plus N square A over V square. Dia ada perubahan kat sini lah. Okay. <clears throat> and the constant there, ada dua tadi kan, A and B. 
So constant tu jangan risau lah. Dia akan bagi the constant A and B for each gases. Setiap gas constant dia berbeza-beza lah. Okay. So this constant pula is correlated or relates to the for A for example it relates with the intermolecular forces. So maksudnya A ni correction untuk intermolecular forces while B the correction for the molecular volume. So what is the molecular volume? Sama dengan uh, sometimes ada certain buku disebut molar volume. Ada certain buku disebut particle volume. Ada certain lagi disebut volume of the gas. Uh, Sama lah tu. Sebenarnya volume particle tu. Okay. Where before this dalam ideal gas, volume gas tadi volume of the gas tu kita tak ambil kira kan. Kita just ambil volume of the container kan. Uh, so here you have to take note that we now must include the correction for the volume. Okay, where we now uh, the volume of the gas are uh, of the gases are significant. Okay. <coughs> okay. So let's say lah, contoh eh, uh, untuk saya explain on this uh, uh, side. Contoh kalau um, Ada nanti dalam contoh ada soalan checkpoint if I'm not mistaken. Dia suruh you calculate pressure using uh, ideal gas law PV equals to NRT and P berapa eh and using real gas, uh, real uh, Van der Waals equation. Okay where you have <coughs> P plus A and square over V square darab V tolak NB equals to NRT. Okay, so let's say lah, dia suruh cari P by using all of these two. Of course, jawapan dia akan berbeza. Okay, cuma kalau lah you dapat, uh, so this is the for real kan? This one is for ideal. Okay, kalau lah you dapat P real is less than P ideal. Okay, the most important fa factor is based on the intermolecular forces or intermolecular attraction. Tapi kalau you dapat P real, value of P yang you kira tu is higher than P ideal, the most important factor is the molecular volume. Meaning that uh, factor dari segi uh, volume of the particle tu lebih signifikan. Dia bukan maksud dia uh, kita cuma ambil kira uh, IMF je, intermolecular attraction je. Molecular volume tak ada effect. No, both have effect, intermolecular forces and mole, uh, molar volume tapi which one is more significant atau factor mana yang lebih kuat? Ah, uh, Ini by looking at uh, for this one. Period less than ideal or period more than ideal? Okay, you akan lebih faham nanti bila kita tengok pada contoh lah eh. <coughs> contoh dia ada di depan ni. Okay, so now let's look at this checkpoint. Okay. <coughs> Okay, so this checkpoint, uh, dia kata kat sini, based on their respective Van der Waals constant, is AR or CO2 expected to behave more nearly like an ideal gas? Maksudnya, siapa yang paling hampir macam ideal gas? Dia bagi macam ni je. Ha, so macam ni nak jawab pula. Okay, so jangan panik. <laughs> okay, kalau you tengok kat sini, kita ada constant value A and B kan? Remember A tadi dalam slide yang ni kita mention A is related to intermolecular forces. This one is for IMF and B is for molecular volume. Correction. Okay for both lah. Okay. So tetap tak bila ada information ni tetap tak menjawab juga. Which one is uh, behave more nearly like other gas kan. So bila kita tengok kat sini Okay, this one eh, tengok jawapan ni. The smaller the values of A and B, lagi kecil value A and B, the smaller the correction. Remember, A and B tu kan sebenarnya correction. Dia nak betulkan balik the real gas supaya dia pergi balik menghampiri atau pergi balik kepada ideal gas. Okay, so that's why the correction. So, lagi kecil correction tu, that's why dia kata kat sini lagi more ideal the gas. Meaning that, lebih menghampiri ideal gas. 
Okay, kalau correction tu lagi besar Ni kan besar, you compare eh. 1 per 3, 4, 3 per 5, 9 0 per 0, 3, 2 dengan 0 per 0, 4, 7 So of course CO2 lagi besar Lagi besar, you imagine kalau uh, ada graph tadi yang PV over RT tu Okay, ideal gas is straight line So this is ideal gas Dia equals to 1 Okay, so maybe ada deviation satu kat sini Satu lagi kat sini, which one? Okay, so kita akan nampak yang lagi besar adalah referring to CO2 Yang lagi kecil adalah referring to AR So AR ni lebih menghampiri idle gas Okay, so that's why <coughs> you boleh explain uh, based on this one lah The terms, terms pula The point that you need to take care uh, or for this uh, checkpoint is this one lah The smaller the values of A and B, the smaller the Correction. Thus, the more ideal the gas. Okay. Clear eh. Berat kan topik ni. Saya pun berat. Berat untuk saya explain. Sebab hari ni saya ada tiga kelas untuk saya explain. Okay. So, tadi tu sebenarnya um, saya just explain secara, I mean, not in really in Uh, details as details Maksudnya saya just sentuh sikit-sikit And kita terus pergi pada uh, Equation Okay so now for this um, uh, Slide eh Okay I will explain Describe the real gas behavior More accurately where we Relate it with the pressure And also the volume Okay and the ideal gas equation Yang kita nak adjust tadi in order to Account for the intermolecular forces And also the Molecular volume. Okay. Dalam real gas ni ada ada dua benda, dia banyak melibatkan dua. Apa maksud dua tu? Real gas ni ada dua benda yang you kena ingat yang sangat penting. First adalah condition dia. Second adalah dia nak adjust apa. So dua benda kan. So for the conditions pun ada dua. Ha, lepas tu saya cakap dia banyak dua. Conditions dia benda ni berlaku apabila when the pressure is very high and the temperature is very low. So ada dua kan? And then apa yang dia nak adjust? So dia nak adjust intermolecular forces and also molecular volume pun ada dua. Okay so dua-dua ada dua. So with this pressure it can go for the intermolecular forces and also the molecular volume. So for the temperature pun sama. It can go for the intermolecular forces and also for the molecular volume. It can, uh, for these two conditions, they will, they can affect both. Intermolecular forces yang you can adjust, molecular volume pun you can adjust. So, <coughs> explanation dia adalah, okay, ni sebenarnya basically gambar yang sama dengan saya tunjuk sebelum ni kan. Okay, so this one let's say lah, saya nak explain in terms of intermolecular interaction dulu. Atau intermolecular forces. Sama lah eh. IMF tu. Okay. So uh, this is the normal uh, pressure. Pressure asal dia lah eh. Kita tahu uh, pressure external ni uh, dalam keadaan macam ni lah. Kita tahu particles you tengok eh. Particles are too far apart to interact. So tak ada interaction kat sini. So you baca point number one here. At normal pressure the free volume between gas. So where where is the free volume? Yang ni yang putih ni. This is the free volume yang tak ada kena dekat gas ni lah. Okay, this is the free volume. Okay, here. Maksudnya, yang putih tu lah. Okay. The free volume are so large that attraction between molecules are negligible. Terlalu besar ruang kosong tu sampaikan uh, attraction between uh, particles tu diabaikan. Negligible. So that's why the gas behave nearly ideally. <coughs> However, okay, point number two, at higher pressure. Higher pressure here means the external pressure. Maksudnya you ada piston tu kan, you asal, okay, dia kat atas. You tekan lagi, so maksudnya you bagi pressure lagi, you tekan. So the external pressure will increases, right? Okay, kalau ikut logik ideal gas, you you cakap apa? Higher pressure, luar, dalam akan jadi higher pressure tu, right? But for real gas, sebaliknya yang berlaku. Dalam akan jadi lower pressure. Lower pressure than actually than the ideal gas uh, as we expect. Okay, 
Sebab apa? Okay so kat sini eh Bila you tekan dia higher uh, pressure The particles now are close enough to interact Asalnya dia kan jauh Tak boleh tak sempat nak jumpa pun Dia tak sempat nak high high dia dah bye bye dulu Sebab dia nak langgar dinding je Kan ini yang you belajar uh, kinetic molecular theory kan But if you give the forces external pressure ni P is very high So now they are close enough to interact Okay So asalnya uh, the intermolecular uh, uh, inter, uh, sorry intermolecular distance tu asalnya tak uh, besar kan Now the intermolecular distance decreases Distance sesama dia dah makin rapat So the molecules tend to attract one another So ada attraction So attraction ni depends lah gas apa Kalau saya kata dia gas helium So helium sesama helium attraction dia apa? London dispersion forces <coughs> Okay So you nak tengok lagi detail kat sini This part yang ni eh Okay so the interparticle attraction The red arrow yang arrow-arrow ni Lower the force of the collision with the wall of container Remember KMT Kinetic molecular theory Teori dia uh, Setiap partikel tu akan melanggar dinding uh, wall of the container kan Itu yang akan memberi pressure kan Because pressure is um, directly proportional to the uh, collision Okay, however bila dia dah rapat so ada interaction here Okay, ni pun ada interaction, ni pun ada interaction So ada interaction, so dia dah jadi berat You imagine lah asalnya you ada satu gas you boleh langgar je dinding tu Tiba ada satu okay nak lekat Lepas tu datang lagi satu nak lekat Datang lagi satu nak lekat So yang satu yang nak langgar dinding ni Force dia dah jadi makin uh, kurang Untuk bergerak dan melanggar dinding tu And uh, to impact the wall of the container tu dah jadi Reduce lah Okay that's why Sebab dia dah berat kan Nak jalan pun slow Dah tarik banyak, banyak sangat uh, partikel lain So you tengok point number three <coughs> As nearby molecules attract those approaching the container wall ha, Tadi kan dia attract yang nak approach the wall ni It reduced uh, their force impact on the wall Eh sorry <coughs> They reduce kan impact to the wall Results in decrease gas pressure exerted Nampak tak? So P kat dalam ni akan jadi menurun Okay, uh, decrease gas pressure associated to the container wall Where the pressure of real gas is less than the that predicted by the other gas law So pressure kat sini berkurang daripada you predict PV and RT Okay pressure dia berapa Tapi sebenarnya bila ada interaction Pressure dia akan jadi kurang daripada yang sebenar Okay, <coughs> I hope you clear eh, with uh, this point Okay So for the intermolecular attraction ni, tadi saya explain in terms of pressure kan So kita tahu kita ada satu pressure, satu lagi apa? Bila dia temperature rendah So in terms of uh, temperature, a very low temperature Okay, we the molecule move very slowly So in this case, dia kekal Before and after, uh, the volume kekal Sebab you tak bagi pressure apa-apa kan So the molecule move cuma Uh, low temperature, you, kalau you ingat lagi saya explain on the Charles law pasal balon uh, Sejuk, uh, you you letak dekat <coughs> balon dekat air panas dengan air sejuk Okay, so now it's very low temperature, air sejuk The molecules move very slowly So we relate this one to the kinetic energy Okay, so uh, the movement kan So the speed lah, so move very slowly This allows the molecules to be close to each other for a longer time Okay Okay dia dah jalan slow kan Sebelum ni laju uh, Kita apa kita cakap okay Tak sempat hi hi bye bye je Bye bye pun mungkin tak sempat But here but slow kan uh, Saya tak tahu lah saya kalau slow ni saya terbayang cerita zombie je uh, Tapi bukan zombie zaman sekarang eh Zombie yang dulu-dulu zaman sekarang zombie dia ganas-ganas Laju-laju Zombie yang slow tu Okay so kalau You imagine lah dia slow so okay sampai slow sempat jumpa Kalau uh, the real one uh, bukan the real one the idle gas one Tak sempat ni pun dia dah pergi kan now uh, sebab slow okay jumpa and dia boleh ada contact for a longer time 
Okay. So, bila ada contact, so automatically dia akan exert an attractive forces. Ah, dah jumpa kan. So, ah, buatlah attraction kat situ. Okay. So, again, bila dah ada attraction, dia punya explanation dia sama macam yang ni. Attraction tu, bila dah slow, dia dah berat kan. Dia dah bawa attract, dia dah bawa kroni-kroni dia ikut sekali. So, dia akan move slowly. Okay. So, that's why uh, pressure kat dalam tu akan jadi lower daripada predicted by the other gas. <coughs> okay. So, I hope uh, it's clear for you eh. Uh, in terms of intermolecular attraction uh, for the temperature. Okay. Tadi saya explain for intermolecular attraction kan. For both. This one is pressure. This one is temperature. Now, adjust adjustment for the molecular volume pula. Sebenarnya benda ni related tau. Maksudnya um, <coughs> dia bukanlah macam you you kena faham benda ni asing-asing. Benda ni berkait semua. Ada efek pada intermolecular forces sebenarnya ada juga efek pada molecular volume. Okay. So uh, dalam punya slide gambar ni tak ada. Ni sebenarnya gambar yang sama. Okay. Semua so, saya masukkan supaya saya senang nak explain lah. Okay. At normal pressure. Kembali pada yang asal gambar tu. Normal pressure, now before this kita cerita pasal pressure itself. Now at normal pressure kita cerita pasal volume eh. Sebab kita nak if, nak cerita pasal effect of molecular volume. So here, dia kata kat sini, the space between molecules or we call it as free volume is enormous or very large compared with the volume of the molecules themselves. Maksudnya, Ni tadi kan kita kata yang warna putih ni aa, ruang kosong tu kita panggil dia free volume. Sangat-sangat besar sampai sebenarnya you boleh abaikan uh, <coughs> volume of the particles. So that's why PV and RT volume yang you ambil adalah volume container. Kan? Okay. So therefore the free volume is approximately equal to the container. Kan? So that's why V uh, in this case Normal pressure, kita masih pakai V real is equal to V ideal. Sama kan? Okay. However, okay. So, net effect on the molecular volume for the pressure eh. When we, up, eh sorry, terbalik. When we apply pressure, P increase eh. Okay, we apply the pressure. Okay, before this, kita cerita pasal intermolecular forces kan. Now, kita nak cerita pasal molecular volume. The free volume decreases. Kan, nampak tak? Free volume tu dah tak ada kan? So, now... <coughs> the molecular volume which is the volume of the gas makes up a greater proportion of the continue uh, of, of the container volume. Maksudnya sekarang yang obvious sekarang adalah uh, volume of the particles, volume gas tu. So meaning that dia dah jadi significant. You tak boleh abaikan dah. Okay. So that's why at very high pressure the free volume significantly less daripada yang ini. Okay. So you kena ambil uh, ambil kisah lah sekarang. Sebelum ni kita uh, negligible kan. Now you have to take note that the volume of the gas must be taken. Kena diambil kira ya. Eh? Okay. So actually benda ni same goes to the temperature eh. Sebab dalam slide you tak ada explain on that one. But sebenarnya lebih kurang samalah on this part. Okay. <coughs> So, kita try tengok uh, contoh eh. Contoh uh, calculation dulu. Okay. If one mole of an other gas will confine to is this volume and this temperature, it will as a pressure. Use when the walls equation and given constant. So, let's say lah dia dah bagi constant eh. A and B. Estimate the pressure. Now, we want to get this value. Berapa pressure dia? Okay. So, uh, of course you have to come up with uh, this uh, Van der Waals equation. Okay. Kalau saya sebab ni dia dah terus straight away. Sebenarnya better you solve for this dulu and B dulu. You solve for N square A over V square. Okay. Solvekan dulu baru tolakkan, baru tambahkanlah supaya tak salah lah. Tapi lah kalau uh, student yang dia very... Um, Excellent or excel in mathematics Tak ada isu lah So in this case Dia terus sebab kat sini dia terus dapatkan P eh So this value is X R T This one <coughs> Okay Tolak ni 
tolak yang mana? Tolak yang ni. Kan? Betul ke? N. Okay. This is N square. This is A. A mana A? Ha, this one. Over B square. So kat sini bahagi kan? So bahagi yang mana? This one eh. Okay. Sebab ni tolak kan? Ha. Complicated sikit. So this one is V tolak N B. Okay. Basically kalau you tak ada masalah, just substitute lah all the value. You akan dapat <coughs> pressure kat sini. Okay. Ah, saya nak awak cuba buat ni. Checkpoint 15. Uh, ah, ni contoh. Calculate the pressure using ideal gas equation and van der Waals equation. Maknanya you nak PV equals to NRT. Here P plus E N square over V square. V tolak NB. Cuba kira ni. NRT. Okay. Of course dia ada beza. Nampak tak jawapan pun dah ada kat sini. Cuba you need to explain kan. Cuba kira dulu dapat tak this one. Okay sekejap. Saya sekejap ni gas apa? Ammonia eh. Sebab dia uh, sebab dia tak bagi value kat sini. Kita patah balik je. Kita tengok value dia. Kosong peng kosong tiga tujuh satu. Kosong peng kosong tiga tujuh satu. Four point one seven. Ah, ni value dia. Cuba kira sekejap. Dapatkan uh, jawapan ni. Nanti kita pergi. Why uh, dia difference. Kita nak explain. Macam mana cara kita nak explain tu kan. Ahem. <clears throat> 
Dacă? Da. Ok. Cuba kita check. Hopefully betul lah jawapan you all eh. Okay. By using PVNRT ni straightforward je kan. Okay let's say lah you kira you dapat 17.68. Okay, by using van sebab dia lagi panjang sikit kan So tadi formula dia P <coughs> P plus A N square over V square Okay, so you darabkan V tolak N B is equals to N R T Okay, so ah ni contoh Kita kita masukkan, uh, kita settlekan satu-satu lah eh, Supaya tak complicated sebab dia ada tambah, ada tolak, ada darab, ada bahagi kan So solve for this one first Okay, you darabkan, you dapat this one. Okay, and then you solve for NB. Okay, darab, dia dapat. So here, uh, <coughs> you substitute kan dia. Okay, uh, so P plus uh, the E N square V square darab dengan, N, uh, sorry, V minus NB. So equals to NRT. So this is the value. Okay, so you nampak kat sini, uh, kita ikut uh, step lah supaya you tak ada tersalah Kat mana-mana calculation kan Okay so the value now here is Lesser than predicted By the uh, ideal gas So we can conclude Here that the P real You calculate using uh, real uh, Van der Waals equation Is less than P Ideal gas Ideal gas okay So based on this equation The intermolecular forces is significance Ini main point yang sebenarnya saya nak highlight kat sini Sebab dia suruh you just Dia suruh you justify kan explain So dia significant ni ah, Kat mana ah, Itu yang saya dah pernah tunjuk kat you <coughs> Sekejap eh Okay yeah, this one Tak ingat slide nombor berapa Yang saya mention about If uh, the P real when you calculate is lesser than P ideal, okay, meaning that the most important factor is intermolecular interaction. But if the P real is higher than P ideal, you have higher pressure, the most important factor is the molecular volume. Now tadi kita kira the real is lesser than ideal. So that's why intermolecular interaction is more significant. Bukannya maksud dia uh, molecular volume tak ada. Ada. Dua-dua ada. Tapi yang mana lagi significant. So here is intermolecular attraction lah. Okay. Ini tadi. <coughs> Sorry. Okay. So that's why uh, bila ada uh, significant ni so NH3 is a real gas lah in this case. Okay, sebenarnya pada saya this one is not uh, really the answer lah. The answer is uh, this part. Okay, intermolecular forces is significant. Okay, so habis for real gas. Any questions so far? Kut, uh, tak ada soalan sebab uh, tak faham benda. <laughs> tak faham satu pun sampai tak ada soalan nak tanya. Especially on the real uh -huh, gas uh -huh. lah. I know uh, that the, um, it's very uh, complex and very macam Eh apa ni? Kenapa dia macam ni? Kenapa dia macam ni kan? Uh, so uh, saya saya tak ada nak marah ke kalau you tak faham. Because this is the first time uh, you apa uh, encounter with this uh, situation real gas. Even saya sendiri yang nak mengajar ni pun saya kena macam betul-betul fahamkan supaya so that I can explain to you uh, better kan. But kalau saya sendiri tak faham, susahlah saya nak explain kat you all. Okay so that's why um, tak apa jangan risau. For the first time of course uh, akan mungkin ada student yang dia mudah tangkap. Okay dia saya explain tadi sekejap je. Okay dah faham dah. Okay ada student macam uh, lambat sikit nak absorb. Tak apa, ada student yang dia memibih langsung Tak boleh terima, tak boleh terima Pun tak apa, okay, because this is the first time You encounter with this equation With this um, situation Real gas ni kan um, I will try to explain Again uh, Tomorrow, eh tomorrow kan, uh, yang ada kelas sejam tu Okay, uh, tapi Of course lah, tak se uh, Lama hari ni Because this is the first time That's why you need to absorb. So by by the time I explain to you tomorrow, I hope uh, yelah benda tu dah lalu. Dah pernah lalu dalam kepala awak kan. Maybe bukan dia lalu, dia masuk kiri, keluar kanan. Tapi at least dia lalu. So ada dalam sedikit memory you kan. 
So besok by the time besok saya explain lagi sekali maybe you akan lebih faham lah. Okay. So jangan risau. Hopefully um, akan dapat satu sebab sekarang pun sekarang uh, you belajar pun petang. Okay 3 o'clock to 5 o'clock. So of course uh, very stressful untuk otak you. You dah belajar dari pagi kan. So now petang pula nak continue. So I will explain again tomorrow. Okay. Um, maybe macam biasa saya buat lah briefly lah. Cuma maybe untuk for this real class saya akan uh, lebih detail sikit supaya dia boleh faham before kita pergi pada tajuk uh, liquid. Okay. So uh, you just uh, be prepared lah for the topic. Okay. Ke ataupun ada yang memang nak tanya juga uh, sekarang sebelum saya tutup our session today. Ada. Ada nak tanya? Tak ada eh. Okay, so tak apa. Uh, so we end our session today uh, with Tasbih Kafara and Surah Tulas. <coughs> okay, sekejap. Uh, sebelum kita tutup eh, by the way, uh, ini tak ada kaitan dengan lecture. Uh, for the assignment, okay, saya tahu you all tengah uh, busy uh, buat assignment tu. Okay, uh, if you all still ada problem, macam tak berapa faham, you boleh je message saya. Cuma uh, saya kan ada bagi um, clarification lagi. Kalau tak faham juga pun boleh tanya saya. Okay, it just that um, apa yang saya minta hari tu, artikel yang you pilih tu, you just summarize daripada artikel yang you pilih. Tak perlu nak cari um, uh, buat projek pasal benda lain. Okay, just baca artikel, summarizekan balik with your own word. Sebab saya dah create uh, account Tenitin. So uh, I hope you boleh register with uh, this Tenitin. Okay, sekejap eh. Saya tunjuk eh. Dah halang-halang ni. Since kita ada masa sikit. I show you the Tenitin. Nanti saya akan bagilah juga uh, dekat WhatsApp uh, the link all. Cuma saya tunjuk dululah eh. Okay, so this Tenitin. Okay. Ah. Uh, nampak tak? Saya buka apa ni? Turn it in eh. Turn it in. You have to turn your assignment in this. Uh, turn it in lah eh. So you log in. Uh, you need to sign in lah. So you sign in as students. Okay. Saya sebab saya sign in as uh, instructor. So you sign in as student ni eh. Turn it. Turn it in uh, dot com. You sign in je dulu. So uh, untuk sign in ni pula uh, tak perlu semua orang nak sebab nak submit tu wakil group saja. Okay. So kalau uh, 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 wakil group yang nak submit kan tu boleh uh, log in dululah. Uh, sorry sign in dulu. So that nanti after bila saya dah uh, buat uh, apa tu. Uh, saya sebenarnya dah create. Cuma nanti saya kena bagi dia ada kod dia. Okay. So ada kod tu. So saya akan uh, bagi. So you boleh masuk dalam kod tu. You boleh submit you punya assignment. Kat situ follow the instruction. Automatically nanti dia akan check uh, index similarity. Uh, saya rasa saya dah check hari tu tak boleh lebih daripada 30% index similarity ya. Eh. Okay. Uh, so tu sebab sementara saya teringat lah. So kelas saya yang sebelum ni saya lupa juga nak bagi tahu. Kita dah, 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 mm, dah end kita punya session ke tadi? Dah baca doa ke? Saya lupa. Dah. Dah. Oh, dah. Okay. Okay.